Hello and welcome back to our Vlandian Night Adventures, and I have leveled my leadership to 152, so we have another trait point to spend. Militia has a 20% chance to spawn with more experienced troops, or the garrison gains 20% more experience. I think a 20% chance to spawn with more experienced troops should be better than the 20% more experience, um, at least at the moment, or at least I think so. And uh, we'll see what we can do going forward. I've just done a task about um, collecting some grain for the nearby village of Remental, and I was able to pretty much do it instantly because I had enough grain to be able to complete it. And uh, it, it actually ended up giving us some very, very worthwhile statistics in regards to mercy and generosity and if i can try to get those things leveled up even more i will be even better at persuading enemies and we're going to do a little bit of a duel here with this guy because i think i have a pretty sizable advantage because i have a very swift sword as you can see right here the sword is extremely fast to swing and should be very easy to use in a dueling situation. But there you go, 2.9 Renown, 2.7 Influence, nothing really too amazing there, but it's okay because I basically just wanted to get rid of that hideout very fast, very quick indeed. And otherwise, what do you think we're going to do now? Are we going to usurp the throne? Are we going to do that? It is going to cost me quite a lot of influence, which would then leave me basically without any power to manipulate at all, pretty much. I, I don't think I would be able to do anything else apart from that, and then maybe enact a couple of policies potentially, because obviously if I'm the leader, if I'm, if I'm the, uh, the liege of the entire faction, then I will have a pretty large amount of sway with people and especially considering my relation with a lot of people is pretty decent as it is however i'm not entirely sure if they're going to like it because here's the thing generally if you usurp the throne most people are not going to be too pleased because they themselves especially when it comes to vlandian values they themselves would want to very much become the next leader of the faction rather than some random upstart that has literally just come up from nothingness, being a new vassal, and then turned into the king himself. So, if I do usurp the throne, it is more than likely that I may have some enemies coming for us. So, I'm not entirely sure if we're going to be able to hold them off, shall we say, if they do end up being somewhat aggressive towards us. But, if I am able to do it, then who knows? Maybe I will have um, a lot of fun and uh, maybe I'll be able to kick out Death Art from, from the faction. I don't think I would be able to with my current influence because as far as I'm aware, expelling a particular clan from your kingdom actually requires quite a lot of influence and I don't have that at the moment. However, if I do become the leader, I should be able to find ways and means of gaining more influence much, much quicker than I do at the moment. So that is something to bear in mind. And I think we're actually done. Yep, there you go. That was very quick and easy. And uh, once we're done here, all of the notables in the area will be gaining some additional uh, relation, of course, and my companions will also gain some nice skills and stuff like that. And we're just going to go for the same kind of attack right here. Look at that. Easy, easy kill for Mr. Bruce right there. Very good work, sir. And there you go. That is it. 5.6 Renown, 4.7 Influence. I'm actually looking at the Influence much more often now because I think that in general we're going to need quite a bit. And uh, I don't know whether I'm going to have enough, but we're going to try it nevertheless. We're going to see. Is anything leveled up here? Oh, yeah, we almost have pole arms leveled up. Scouting has almost leveled up to 242. Next time I gain a focus point or um, an attribute point, I'll probably spend it in cunning because that is going to get us extra hit points, which in my opinion is basically pointless. I have no idea why this trait is here, to be honest. I think scouting should not have 
hit points. I, I don't know. Maybe that's just me. I just don't think that that's very useful. I think this is useful. And I think scouting in general should be about vision range. It should be about movement speed. It should be about uh, foraging potentially. So giving you some, uh, you know, some ability or another to gain uh, food back in some way or another. That would probably be quite advantageous. However, giving me extra HP, especially the HP that is not actually going to be, well, quite frankly, it's not going to be doing anything because eight. HP is is nothing. You're just going to die instantly. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you get hit. You know, if you get hit by a lance or something, you're dead. You know, there's nothing really you can do about it. Sylvind has been attacked, which is not exactly good. I do need to go and see her because, as I said before, we do need to go and uh, potentially get her into our, uh, into our party. Um, someone did actually mention, though, that the death mechanic, quote-unquote, actually doesn't work in the current version that I'm playing as. Uh, as far as I'm aware, the the version that does work is the next one, which is uh, 1.5.0. So uh, thank you for letting me know about that because I, I thought that the death thing was not really working, but I, I heard reports of um, a number of people that actually had their character die. So I'm, I'm receiving all kinds of conflicting information here and I really don't know which is which, is which you know, to be honest. So a bit of a bit of a disparity there between things but I, I've never myself experienced anything so it might very well be that it is not working at the moment um, but I'm hoping that it will uh, begin working soon because that very much in my opinion provides so much more immersion so much more atmosphere in the game and a lot a lot more tension as well because if you're in a situation where you can potentially lose your character and then you're going to have to take over playing as your wife or if you're playing as a female character then obviously taking over as your husband or in the case of uh, if you have children and uh, you know your wife or your spouse has already been killed um, then of course you will take over as your child and uh, well that, that's going to be kind of interesting okay so it seems like I will definitely spend a little bit of influence here to declare war we will be increasing our relation with Ingalthas clan because as I've said before having as much support as possible is going to be very important for us even if it does mean uh, taking a little bit of damage here and there oh it seems like I'm just gonna send my troops in there doesn't seem to be that much point for me to do anything else because these guys are significantly outnumbered. We are going to get some decent influence and things like that, but um, I actually wanted to do more than that. I actually wanted to go in and see if we could get maybe another champion to rise up through the ranks, but it seems like Ekarand was right next to us here, and as a result, it has made things very simple for us indeed. Hmm. Oh well. Who am I to say? I I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. Um, I'm actually not going to take any any of the money from these tasks anymore. I'm just going to gain honor as much as I possibly can and gain a huge amount of relation as well. Bear in mind that the Bear Tilled clan is still only clan tier 4, which I got to say I'm very uh, surprised about. Not going to be doing family feud, by the way. That's uh, just not something I'm going to do anymore. It's, it's, in, the, in the beginning, family feud is really good because it does give you the opportunity to gain some pretty nice... A uh, little bit of extra cash injection and stuff like that. But as you can no doubt tell, I'm doing pretty well in terms of our cash at the moment. And um, I actually just would like to see... Are these Vlandians? Yes, these are actually Vlandians. Very nice indeed. I'm building up my army right here as well. Because who knows, if I do become the leader of the Vlandians, then it would probably be a good idea for me to have a decently sized army. Just in case. You know, you, you never know. You never know what's going to happen. So... Yeah, anyway, there we go. Upgrade my troops. I love this button. I love the upgrade all troops button. I feel like this should be included as, as a base feature in the game. It is just so, so good. And uh, I, I guess that's the reason why the developers decided to release mod tools so incredibly early on as well. So that, you know, the, mod, the modding community could get involved directly with the game's uh, progression through the development cycle and make all of these amazing changes and uh, help the game to be even more playable than it already is. All right, so um, I think we're going to try it, shall we? 
All right. So where where actually is it, by the way? Because I seem to forget. Ah, oh, there it is. Okay. So, whoa, we have a lot of clan support. I'm actually really surprised that we have so much um, so much clan support. Ah, I think, you know what? I think the uh, usurp option is determined by how much influence the current ruling clan has. That's actually very intriguing to me, because does that mean that the AI can also usurp the throne from me? If that is indeed the case, we might have some issues. Hmm. Yeah, we might indeed have some issues there. All right, okay, okay, okay. We're gonna do it. Boom. It, uh, yep, there we go. I, I think that's it. And look at this, we're actually losing a lot of relation here, as expected. I mean, I kind of thought that that would happen. These guys do not like me. Ospia, I'm going to have to go and help Ospia quite a bit. And these guys don't like me either. Belgia does not like me that much. So um, I'm thinking maybe we'll spend some influence, um, you know, getting those guys uh, to like us again. But what I would like to do first is try to enact a policy that will give me more influence first off. So, for example, this, the ruler clan gains three influence per day. That is already 100% supported. So that's going to get pushed through almost immediately, which is very, very useful. Um, this is also really good. Ruler clan gains 100 dinars per day for each town in the kingdom. We have how many, how many towns? We have like six or something, seven or something like that. So 700 dinars per day is not exactly that much. But as time goes on, that is obviously going to exponentially increase. Uh, influence cost of creating an army. Ruler's party size, don't care about that. Royal privilege, don't care about that either. This is good, but this is still only 0 0.5 influence. I would like to try and see if I can get something better. Mm, no, no. There's, I, I, is it just me or are there a lot more policies? I feel like there are maybe a lot more policies. This is only 39%, but this can be very good. Each notable yields 0 0.1 influence per day to the settlement's owner clan. If you have a lot of fiefs, that's really, really useful. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it seems to me like Sacred Majesty is probably going to be what we'll take. And uh, yeah, we are indeed going to be doing that. Let's do it. Yep, we're supporting ourselves. There we go. And uh, non-ruler clans will just lose 0 0.5 influence. I personally don't really mind about that. I think that that is perfectly fine. And uh, is there anything that actually loses me influence? Uh, let's have a look. The ruler gains double influence from mercenaries. That's pretty good. Mm, tier 4 clans. Okay, yeah. Peerage is probably a bit uh, problematic for me because um, the influence cost of overriding the popular decision is doubled, which is uh, kind of problematic. Tier 5 clans gain influence, that's absolutely fine, and we're gaining this amount of influence. So we're gaining 3 influence per day, which is really not that much. But obviously, if we continue to go into battles and continue to do things like that, then we should have a pretty easy time of things. Okay, so these are actually Sturgeons, but they are noble units. So I'm actually going to be recruiting them. Um, and uh, there's a good reason for that, of course. I, I, I personally feel like we should use any unit that we can to give ourselves the advantage and that's generally what we're going to be approaching most situations uh, with here in this particular playthrough because being able to adapt to any situation at all is very very useful and uh, indeed if we are pushed up against a wall and we don't have anywhere to go and we're trapped we're going to fight hard we're going to fight as hard as we possibly can and see if we can survive. And uh, that's what we're going to try to do. All right, so I would like to fight some Sturgeons, if at all possible. So I am the leader of the uh, of the whole faction now, which is actually kind of amazing. I think that uh, Diplomacy Fixes, which I believe is the mod that allows you to do this, by the way. So if you'd like to check out that mod, it is called Diplomacy Fixes. And uh, you can see, uh, maybe there's a link in the description. I'm not sure. Some uh, I think I ran out of... Um, I think I might have run out of description space, so that's the reason why some of the mods do not have links to them, but they're very easy to find. Most of them are very, very popular and uh, pretty easy to see on the Nexus. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, 
Hmm. We do have some quests, don't we? Yes, we have these quests. Okay, so we still have 650 days on these. So I'm basically just going to leave them the way they are at the moment. And we're going to head deeper into uh, Sturgeon territory. Mantios's army. Ah, oh, you know, if, if this was the old days in the previous version, I'd be speaking to Mantios right now and I'd try to get him to join us. But obviously that is not going to happen because he is, of course, a part of uh, an army at the moment. Okay, noble retinues. Okay, so this guy... Tier 5 clans lose one influence, and the party size of their leaders is increased. He wants this. Okay. Uh, I'll support it. Yep, I'll support it. My relation with him is going to increase, hopefully. Um, doesn't seem to, actually. Doesn't seem to have increased, probably because I didn't dedicate any influence to it, because I don't have any influence. I don't have the minimum required amount, I believe. So that is obviously making things... A bit uncomfortable for me, considering I'm the leader of the faction, of course. But, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. I'm going to actually just take a quick look. Ah, yes, as you can see, uh, it seems to me like I will probably be able to be deposed very easily if someone has 42 influence. And they obviously pretty easily do so it might be uh it might be a bit problematic but this is the first time i'm obviously usurping a throne and uh it's going to be kind of interesting to see how the ai reacts to it because if they do have the option to do it as well then that's going to be very intriguing to see how they respond and i, I for some reason i'm not finding any sturgeons i don't know why i really have no clue i don't really have enough influence really to um <laughs> call for an army or anything like that. So I guess I'll just attack a uh, caravan or something and um, we'll see We'll see how it goes. I mean, I'd like to fight a Sturgeon vassal of about 100, 150 units. That would be really nice. But as it stands, that doesn't seem to be available at the moment. All right, here we go. We're fighting in the snowy lands of the Sturgeons and we're up against, well... As you can no doubt tell, we are up against a caravan, which is going to be pretty easy for us, of course. Um, but the main reason why I wanted to do this is to just level up a couple of our forces, you know? Just level them up a little bit, because they are very fresh-faced and uh, they're kind of um, a bit green, you know? They're a bit green. They're not, uh, they're not particularly used to the rigors of combat just yet. So if we can get them into a situation where they might very well level up, might become champions, might rise up through the ranks, then that is all that I'm really wanting them to do. I'm going to just auto-delegate everyone now and see what they decide to go for. And we're also going to be moving in there with my wonderful slashing polearm. And that reminds me, I do need to find where a war razor is. If anyone has any ideas, by the way, where I can find a war razor, by all means, let me know. I'm perfectly happy to... Uh, receive some information regarding that. I think that there are probably going to be war raisers, maybe in the Kuzate territory, but that is very far away from Blandian territory right now, so not entirely sure if I'm going to have the um, ability to go over there too easily, but, you know, should be fine. Should be fine. Um, now, this is the main issue with auto-delegation, in my opinion. I feel like auto-delegation is very cautious. I feel like it doesn't really go hard enough, if you know what I mean. They seem to just be kind of um, messing around a little bit. They, they don't seem to be as decisive as you would want them to be in these kinds of situations because, let's face it, just look, look at the infantry right now. They're not doing anything, but they could literally just charge straight on against these ranged units and murder them very very quickly and easily because let's face it we outnumber them so dramatically that it should be a uh, steamroll however i understand that maybe the ai doesn't accurately know that the enemy is outnumbered and as a result they're just acting as though they don't have the advantage and in which case being um, a little bit cautious in that in that situation is probably going to be a bit more advantageous than not of course because you don't want you know, a bunch of your infantry running into a whole line of, I don't know, Imperial Sergeant Crossbowmen or something along those lines and then just getting themselves murdered. That would be pretty bad, wouldn't it? Yes, that would be pretty bad. However, that also needs to be looked at, in my opinion. I don't think 
the um, the AI should be so tentative when it comes to dealing in those situations because they need to they need to go in you know they need to charge they need to do stuff to, that actually gets you know that actually gets you in a uh, you know in a better situation for victory anyway let's see if we can uh, try to persuade Godun to join us here I believe he is um, he is open to it potentially and maybe if he uh, doesn't particularly like being with the Kuzate, he might join us. This is a dangerous step. I do have quite a lot of... Oh, hello there. You're going to join us, sir, by the looks of things. Okay, so there you go. There's the auto offer. I'm just going to see whether that is indeed the best offer I can give him. Yep, that is the best offer I can give him. He only has 6,300. I have, I mean, I have a decent amount of cash. I can make more cash by obviously using smithing. So I'm going to have him join us. There we go. Nice. Okay, I'm liking this. Very good. This is our first persuasion. Bear that in mind. Obviously, I'm not going to be doing as much persuasion as I have in previous series because it, well, it does make things um, a little easier, I guess. But I, I think in general, nowadays, it is very difficult to actually have it work. And um, Sylvind is someone that we are going to need to speak to as soon as possible now because she has escaped captivity. She was taken prisoner beforehand. Okay, so plus 10 to party size for every vassal. Is that worth it? Or 50% more tax income from mines? I don't even know whether I have a mine, to be honest. Um, I mean, 50% is a, it's a, it's a large amount. And 10 party size, that doesn't really make any difference. So I'm just going to go for the... Um, the tax money. I don't think I'm going to be really making anything from it. I mean, I, I don't even know where the mines would be, to be honest. I suppose iron ore and stuff like that. Villages that produce iron ore and silver ore and, and stuff like that. I guess those would probably give us um, a pretty decent profit or something. But uh, yeah, anyway, thankfully we do have Godun who has now joined us. And uh, yeah, we're going to need to uh, head into a village here just to refresh the encyclopedia. And then we will be going on to speak to Sylvant because obviously she does need to... Oh, she's at Nevyang's castle. Oh, that's perfect. That's absolutely perfect. That is exactly where I would like her to be. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's go into our clan screen real quick. And we are... Oh, no, she's actually just going to be staying there by the looks of things. That is great. That's really, really nice. And uh, hopefully she won't leave... By the time I get there, there's a whole bunch of hideouts here that I need to get rid of as well. My scouting skill is actually almost at 250 as well, which is always good. Ah, there's Ragonfat. I'd actually like to fight him, to be honest. Um, I think he would probably be uh, quite a good target. However, I would like Sylvan to be in our, in our army before we do that um, for now. And uh, we're gaining some good, look at this, we're gaining some good influence. Look at that. It's actually going quite nicely so far. Even though it is such a small gain, it does add up over time. So I guess that's pretty good. Anyway, we're finally here. We can now take her into our party. And then we can uh, put her to the top of the list. Now, bear in mind, um, I think some people actually told me that I should be uh, taking something from some of my companions. I can't remember what you've actually said, unfortunately. So what we're going to do is just go into the inventory right here and just take a quick look. Okay, so she needs a cloak. So she can just wear that straight up. And uh, we're currently using a destrier. I think someone said to me to steal someone's horse. Did you tell me that? Or did you tell me to, to take something else? Maybe it was a, um, a weapon of some kind. Or maybe a, a piece of armor, potentially. Um, at the moment, however, I have some pretty decent armor on. As you can see, I've got a, an armor piece that, um, well, is pretty insane. Uh, I think it's probably the best that we currently have available to us. Um, is there anything else? Uh, chain barding, I'm already using that, as you can quite clearly tell. So uh, we could... I don't think there's actually anything that I really need to take here. Um, maybe the helmet? No, I think I've got a better helmet. Do I? Yeah, I have a better helmet. Just about. And it doesn't seem like there is anything else, to be honest. So I'm not entirely sure. I'll, I'll probably have to refer back to that comment and just see what you were actually saying. 
because it might very well be that I am misremembering about it. But I've taken a look at our gear and everyone seems to be looking pretty good at the moment. Anyway, there it is. A successful usurping of the throne of Vlandia. And we now have complete control over the faction. And we're gonna see. Uh, we're gonna see what happens. And uh, hopefully, they will not try to steal it from me. Uh, yes, I can wholeheartedly believe that they will. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.